This week's theme on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast is the ultimate guide to RMDs or required distribution, minimum distributions in 2024. Today, I'm talking about what to know when you start your RMD that first year and how you can aggregate multiple RMDs together if you have several accounts. So let's start with talking about these aggregation rules. So In certain circumstances, but not all, you can take your RMDs from one account. There's situations where this makes sense. So if you have three different IRA accounts that are invested differently, maybe one is in CDs or bonds, one is in stocks, and one is, I don't know, invested in some sort of company stock or whatever that may be. You could actually take the total account balance, calculate the total RMD and take it all from one account. There are a lot of situations where this makes sense. I do it all the time for clients. Maybe it's a year like uh, 2022 where the stock market dropped significantly. Well, bonds were down too, but the stock market was down more. And you have an IRA that is more conservatively invested. Maybe you own some CDs or more conservative investments. That might be a good year to take your RMD from that account because you're letting your stock account recover and continue to hopefully turn around and grow, which it did do in 2023. So not taking a distribution from that account helps to kind of at least not make things worse in a down year. There might be a situation where you have too much in stocks or you have a concentration in a particular stock, like you have company stock or something like that in one of your accounts. And so taking your RMD all from that account where you're trying to strategically lower your stock percentage, or maybe it was a blowout year, it was a fantastic year for your investment portfolio or a particular concentrated stock position you had made like 50% that year. Well, maybe that's a good year to sell that from that account only and reduce the risk and being strategic about selling that. Or a lot of times, you know, you might have accounts that are all pretty well diversified and you're just trying to kind of simplify things, taking your RMD from one account versus calculating it and taking it from multiple accounts. So there's lots of reasons why you would want to aggregate or consolidate those RMDs into one. It provides flexibility and to kind of pick and choose and cherry pick where you want to take those RMDs from. And you can change that up every year if you want. Now, you can't aggregate RMDs from all accounts. And this is where the rules get stupid, in my opinion, and complicated. Leave it to Congress to make things overly complicated and write in the rules that you can aggregate from IRAs and simple IRAs and SEP IRAs. Any of those account types you can lump in together. But guess what? If you have an IRA and a 401k, you can't aggregate those. If you have a 401k, that account must have its own RMD. So you have to calculate it and take that exact amount for the RMD from the 401k. The same thing is true with 457 plans. These are government, usually federal government plans. And then 403b plans. Now, the rules get even more complicated with 403b because you can actually aggregate required minimum distributions from 403bs but you can only do that with other 403B accounts. So like if you had a 403B and an IRA, you couldn't aggregate those. If you had two 403Bs and one IRA, you could aggregate the two 403Bs, but not with the IRA. So you can see where it gets complicated pretty quickly here. Another example, if you have a rollover IRA, you have a simple IRA, you have a traditional IRA, those all can be lumped together. And you can aggregate those account balances and take your RMD from one of them. However, I would argue if you are retired, there's no reason to have three separate IRA accounts. The rollover IRA, the simple IRA, and the traditional IRA could all be moved into one account. And then that would take care of solving the aggregation issue anyways. If you have a Roth IRA, there are no required distributions from that account, which is good. And then also starting in 2024, You used to have to take RMDs from Roth 401k accounts and Roth 403b 457 accounts, but you don't have to anymore. You don't have to take RMDs anymore from those accounts. So are you confused yet? (laughs) Because it is very confusing. So you can see that depending on the different account types, some require distributions, some don't like the Roth, 
Some allow you to aggregate, some don't. And I'd say that the takeaway here is that if you have these old accounts, especially if you already are retired or are planning to retire, don't keep a 401k and a 403b and an IRA. Don't keep them all separate. You can roll all of those accounts over to an IRA. You can consolidate everything. And then the rules are much simpler. So it's just one more reason to consolidate and simplify things. Whenever you change jobs, take that old retirement account from your employer, put it into an IRA and continue to do that all the way through retirement. And then that way you don't have all these different accounts floating out there that all require their own RMDs once you reach that age. It's a huge headache. It's more likely that you're going to forget to take an RMD from one of the accounts, pay a penalty. I mean, you think those people at the large financial institution are going to take the time to call you and say, hey, Joe, by the way, it's December 15th. We're coming up on that cutoff for taking the RMD. You might want to take that out. No, they're not going to do that. So it's more likely that you're going to forget, pay a penalty if you have multiple accounts floating out there. All right. The other thing I wanted to talk about for today, and I know we're getting a little bit long, but it is important and it's pretty brief. The very first year that you take your RMD, you have some options. So if you are turning 73 this year, you're going to take your first required distribution. So in this first year, you actually have, normally you have to take out the required distribution by the end of the calendar year. So by December 31st of this year. But if you turn 73 this year, you could actually wait until April 1st of next year to take your first RMD. But the rub is that then in 2025 next year, you basically have to take two RMDs. So it can result in a higher tax bill, bump you up into a whole new tax bracket. So you want to be careful with that. I would say most of the time, I can't remember the last time I had a client or advised a client to take two RMDs and wait that first year. There could be some circumstances, like if you already are in a really high tax bracket this year, and you know you're going to be in a really low tax bracket next year for whatever reason, that might be a situation where you would combine the RMDs and, and delay it until next year. But just know that generally that first year, you do have some options to delay it. But most of the time, I would say, unless you have a special circumstances, you're probably just going to want to take it by the end of the calendar year for that first year. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Ashley Michike, and this is the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast.